So, uh, good morning, everyone, uh, and uh, good morning to this pleasant morning uh, where we are going to discuss something uh, different. And I thank uh, Dr. Gaurav for having me for this uh, interesting uh, discussion. So, the topic today that we are going to discuss is will uh, artificial intelligence (AI) take our jobs? Right. So, uh, trying to you know create a little bit of a uh, interesting, controversial, uh, exciting topic, and uh, you know, hold on to your horses because it's going to be really interesting. So the next 20 minutes, uh, there's something you will, you will, you know, really enjoy. Okay, so this is the broad outline of the talk. Now, uh, the talk has broadly two parts. One is the boring part, right? Uh, it's not that boring. So, uh, you know, it's, it, that's interesting as well. So we'll discuss the definitions, the discussion about AI itself. Uh, and then uh, the second part would be the actual practical part. We'll show you the work which we are doing, some actual work that we have done in the field of AI and also uh, share with you some other useful AI tools available for you today, which you can start using uh, right after this talk. You can start using them uh, to improve and enhance your practice and clinical research. So that's the broad outline of the talk today. So let's start with the first part. Uh, that is everything about artificial intelligence, which doctors need to know, uh, everything about AI. Now, why this topic and why technology? Right? So if you see the field today, right now, you know, the world today, what is happening is there's an interesting dynamic change which is happening uh, in the world today. Now, uh, recently, you know, last year, 2022, I went to the American Diabetes Association, ADA. Uh, and what is interesting, there's something very interesting. So you have this, you know, uh, uh, the, the exhibition where you have the pharma exhibition and the, uh, you know, uh, a vendors exhibition, which is usually there in most conferences. So generally, these conferences, you know, the exhibition is full of pharma companies uh, coming with new products and so on. So on. Uh, in India, also, you go to any conference, you have the exhibition, you have that exhibition part where you have a lot of pharma companies displaying their products and uh, services. Uh, what is interesting is, uh, this time in the ADA, there were more technology companies than pharma companies, one. And the bigger stalls were all taken up by tech companies. And pharma companies were all sidelined and they were all, you know, small, small stalls in some, some corner of the exhibition hall, which is very interesting. And if you see the pipelines also for pharma companies, the pipelines of pharma companies are very rapidly drying. Uh, often this is because of the fact that there's now less money, uh, less monetary push in the pharma space. And we all know that wherever there is money, uh, you know, innovation is often driven by money. And money is now flowing more towards technology. And especially within the space of technology, uh, AI and machine learning are the biggest development so far in the field of technology. So now there's a lot of money, there's a lot of uh, interest and a lot of efforts moving towards the field of AI, especially in the healthcare field. And I think AI and healthcare is perfectly fit for each other. So I think that is, that is why AI is very, very important and very, very essential for doctors to really understand uh, AI and, and to try to use that in their own day-to-day -day lives to enhance their uh, quality of clinical practice. Now, AI is currently very much in discussion. And this discussion really came from one big innovation, one big push, and that is chat GPT. Now, unless you are living under a rock, I'm sure you would have heard about chat GPT. Chat GPT, according to some technology people, is an innovation which can be uh, linked, or which can be probably correlated to the level of Gutenberg Press. It's a Gutenberg Press level innovation. It's a big innovation. Again, so much so that the Time magazine has actually put Chat GPT on its cover, which is, I think, something which is remarkable. Why this is such a big innovation? Why this is such a big step? If you use Chat GPT, you'll automatically know why this is such such a great tool. But it's a it's the first really commercially usable tool, which can you know which dazzles you with the power which ai has and i'll actually show you how you know in fact the power of chat gpt itself uh, in in the next few slides how useful chat gpt is and how how break how big a breakthrough it is why compare it to gutenberg level press innovation now so you know that you know before the time of the press uh, was invented what happened was that you had scribes you know the scribes who would you know uh, copy uh, textbooks and copy books and they will then distribute these books and copies and everything else. Uh, but what changed was that with the innovation of press, this handwritten manuals went away. And then as a result of that, you had more dissemination of information. I think the second level Gutenberg press innovation was actually Google or search engines, but Google in particular, 
And then the third level, which is now taking it further forward, is ChatGPT. ChatGPT is something which will, if done right, will break the information gap, the information uh, issues, the knowledge gap that a lot of our patients have. And it will actually bring AI right to our homes and right to our desktops and mobile phones. So there are a few terminologies you'll hear a lot about in future. Now I'm not going to discuss too much in detail about these terminologies, but you'll hear about them a lot uh, in the coming days. So you need to be accustomed with these terminologies. You need to be accustomed with these, these words. Uh, and if you don't know, I think the best idea is that you go to chat GPT and ask them, chat GPT, what is artificial intelligence? And it'll give you the correct answer. It'll give you the right answer in a few lines. Uh, and you, you would obviously, you know, be uh, better equipped with that knowledge. But I'll also try to help you understand what terminologies you really need to understand. And a few uh, examples and few uh, things which you need to know. So the terms which you really need to understand and hear, we'll hear a lot about it is artificial intelligence. You'll hear a lot about machine learning. You'll hear a lot about chat GPT. You're already hearing a lot about it right now. You hear, hear something about neural networks. This is very, very useful in medical field. Computer vision. Not only you'll hear a lot about computer vision, but I'll show you an example of computer vision, which you already used in our own, one of our tools which we are developing. And you'll hear a lot about large language models, and that is LLM. LLM also is something we are using uh, in our own uh, innovations, which we have done. Uh, and this is something which, again, you need to understand a lot about. Okay, so what does AI in general and chat GPT in particular mean for healthcare? Why, it's important, why, why, is, it, why is it so important for our field? So the reason why it's important is that AI, it, like I said, it is very useful to reduce the information gap, right? So our patients, you know, one of the biggest challenges we have, uh, you know, if you're a surgeon, uh, you know, your patients are not uh, equipped with the knowledge about the surgery. They don't know the potential complications of the surgery. They don't know the outcomes of the surgery. They don't know why the surgery is important for them. So the information gap is a big problem in our field. Uh, and hence, you know, you can use AI to reduce the information gap. But more importantly, you can develop better predictive models. Now, healthcare is often like gazing into the crystal ball. It's very important that we can predict outcomes in healthcare. That's why healthcare, you know, is such an important tool. And predictive outcomes in healthcare is something which you've all been doing for many years. So, you, you know, you, for example, if you're a cardiologist, you'd have heard about Framingham risk score, right? If you're in diabetes field, you know that, you know, uh, if your HbA1c is more than 7, your risk of diabetes related complications are more. Uh, if you are in the field of hepatology, you know about FIP4 score, you know, you know about child score, child book score, you know. So all these predictive tools, we often try to make predictions. And what better than, what better than AI to make better predictions? So AI is in fact a perfect tool for making predictions. Another problem which it solves is that you are able to analyze big data much better. So there's a better analy data analytics within a few clicks of a button, you can get a lot of uh, information from your data. And this is a big boost for evidence-based medicine. So this there'll be a paradigm shift in how data is analyzed and AI for data, ana data analysis is something going to be going to become very routine. Uh, in medical, fee medical college, we are taught about biostats. I think biostats is out. Trust me, biostats is out. What you need to know is how to use AI to develop evidence-based medicine. Again, I'll show you some examples of how you can do that. And then with all this, you will be able to deliver healthcare at a larger scale. Remember, the problem in our country, we all talk about this, we have a poor doctor-patient ratio. And because of that, experts and expertise is not able to, we are not able to deliver that uh, to the homes of the public. And hence, uh, you know, this is where technology is really going to be useful, that you will be able to scale the healthcare delivery, especially using AI, to a larger context and larger field. So then the question comes, and this is the, you know, uh, topic which we had today. Will AI replace doctors? Now, if you, you, you know, you'd ask me that, you know, uh, Om, if you're saying that there's so much AI that can do, then why do you need doctors? Why will, why will the doctors be required? Well, let me counter question this for you and ask you that you had Guttenberg Press. Did Guttenberg Press replace authors? No. In fact, it did something exactly the opposite. What the press did is that now there were more people who could write and then publish their work and then disseminate their work to a larger public. Hence, as a result, I think a lot of things change after the Gutenberg Press. And after the Gutenberg Press was invented, the field of knowledge and writing and authorship 
and books became center stage. Same thing happened with, let's say, now you know, now you have Amazon self-publication, right? So you can, you can now, if you write a book, if uh, Dr. Gaurav writes a book, he can, he doesn't need, require a publisher to help him publish it. He can use Amazon to publish his book, sell his book on Amazon, Kindle, and, uh, you know, uh, people like me can read his books uh, without requiring a publisher. So it removes the need for a publisher. The same question, let me tell you. So what I'm trying to say is that AI is not going to reduce your work. In fact, it will increase your work, right? Just like, remember, in this field, you are authors. You are the people who are generating the evidence. You are the people who are seeing the patients. You are the people who are writing prescriptions. You are the people who are performing surgeries, right? A tool cannot replace that. That's the very important thing. And most importantly, right, this is a field where the importance of humans is often understated, but humans are the most important area uh, people here, right? And even if AI can give you the evidence, the delivery of the evidence has to be done by you as a doctor. The second question let me ask you is that did Da Vinci, you know, you have Da Vinci now and you have robotic surgery. Did Da Vinci, did the robotic surgery replace surgeons? No. In fact, it created a new field where surgeons are now trained in robotic surgery and they are able to perform better surgeries, more precise surgeries. Uh, and in fact, generate more income also for themselves and for their hospitals with the use of robotic surgery. So what ultimately happens is that, you know, contrary to our belief, a lot of the times, this these tools actually enhance our practice and improve our work rather than to reduce it. And always remember this point. Jobs are never gone. Jobs always change. Jobs always evolve. And people in companies that don't evolve, and that's always the rule of law, people in companies that don't evolve, will perish that's that's very true you know for example nokia right who would have thought uh, 10 years back that nokia is not going to be around after 10 years nobody right we all use nokia phones nokia was at home at our homes at a center stage you know you talk to a nokia uh, phone almost everybody had a nokia phone right in 10 years in a decade there's no nokia the company has been you know wiped off literally from the face of the earth uh, in in a decade why because they did not evolve in the same way Though I'm saying that jobs are never gone uh, or, or AI will not replace you, it's very important to understand that if you do not evolve, then it will rep definitely replace you. So that is something you need to be aware and you need to be cognizant of this fact. And in fact, my favorite quote is this, and this is something you should imbibe in your own life. AI will not replace doctors, but doctors who use AI will replace the doctors who don't. So this is very important. This is something which we need to understand and we need to be cognizant and we need to be aware of this fact. And if you do not understand this, you know, you are at a risk of being replaced by AI or somebody who uses AI. So that's something you need to understand. Of course, most importantly, you need to understand the fact that AI is a tool, it's a resource. It's like say an X-ray or a lab equipment or a CT scan or, or a fibro scan. Right? It's a tool that we have in our arsenal. A fibro scan is not going to replace a hepatologist, right? No. It will probably not even replace a, a histopathologist. You'll probably still require a biopsy uh, as a gold standard to determine the fibrosis in a liver. So same way, this is a tool. AI is a tool. It's not there to replace you. It's there to enhance you. It will equip the patients, but it will also equip you towards delivering better care at a faster and larger scale. And that's something which is the priority and which is the most important thing. So, this is the end of the first part and these are the conclusions which I have for you, take home messages for you. AI is a tool, it's a resource, it's not there to replace you, it's not there to take your job away, but it's there to help you do a better job. And remember, always remember that your job still can be replaced unless you evolve and start using AI for the betterment of your practice because that is what your patients will demand, right? Uh, five years back, when I or six years back, when I started my uh, practice in Ahmedabad, there are very few people who are using WhatsApp very effectively for their own clinical practice. But now, all of us, you know, all our patients inform our sugar values on WhatsApp. WhatsApp has become center stage. Why? We all evolved towards using WhatsApp because it's something which our patients demand, and hence we tend to and you uh, you know we need to use it. So that's the broad point as far as the AI is concerned. Now. Let's move to the second part. And here I'm going to show you some of the work that we are doing in this field. And uh, it's, you know, a lot, see, a lot of this work, consider this like as a, as a lab, as an experiment. These are all little bit tiny experiments that we are doing. Uh, 
they are often far from being a complete product, but eventually this will become a complete product. And these are all uh, commercial exper these are these are non-commercial experiments which do not, may not have commercial value. So these are all uh, little tools, little learnings, little experiments, right? So always you know think in that sense. Okay, so this is one tool which we have made, which is called Doctor GPT. Now, unfortunately, uh, we you tried to make an app for this, uh, and we we got a root awakening, root shock from Apple saying that we can't allow your app because it is very close to Chat GPT and that can create a confusion so you need to change the name of your service and your app so it's soon going to be renamed and rechristened as codemat uh, so watch out for this but currently it's currently available as a web application called drgpt.co.in now it's a very simple idea simple idea is that using ai you can actually determine what is the best specialist you should consult for your clinical or medical problem it's a simple tool right so i'll show you uh, on the right side you can see the example uh, of this happening so uh, you what you do is you need to put in the medical condition which you're facing or the symptoms which you're facing right so for example let's say you are suffering from excessive vomiting right so you uh, you know write down excessive vomiting here okay so write on write excessive vomiting you click on it and then it will ask you whether you need to see a specialist or whether you can see a general doctor so let's say we want to see a specialist so you click on that and then it will give you the result whether what specialist you should try and consult so here it says you need to consult a gastroenterologist for your excessive vomiting and so on right so you can type try this out it's freely available it's drgpt.co.in uh, it's like i said soon going to be renamed as codemed and we are soon coming up in fact by next week we should have the app uh, on the uh, uh, site soon but when it comes as an app it will be it will be renamed as codemed instead of dr gpt but currently it's dr gpt so you can try it out you can try out complex conditions also. Yesterday, somebody asked me, uh, whom should I consult for MRKH? MRKH is mayer rokitansky Chris kushner hoyer syndrome, which is a uh, condition where you have, you know, Mullerian agenesis. Uh, so, you know, you try this. Try try putting MRKH and it will tell you what doctor you should consult. So, that's, that's the idea, right? Simple tool, simple application. We are trying to basically develop more into it that, you know, uh, the next step would be, that will suggest you the best gastroenterologist close to your home uh, and then you can consult your relevant doctor. Uh, it's it's something, you know, I'm sure if done right, probably will replace something like a practo. So that's one. The second thing we are developing, uh, we have already developed and which, uh, which uh, you know, we already uh, submitted an uh, abstract also in one of the conferences soon. So this is a pre-publication thing. So again, uh, you know, please do not... Uh, widely share it you know you can you can of course use it for your own uh, use but uh, you know be careful about sharing it because it's under publication under a peer reviewed publication so this is something we are trying to develop we are trying to develop a computer vision model for thyroid nodule so what we want is that you can if you can take just the photograph of the thyroid nodule it should be able to derive what is known as a thyroid score thyroid score is the scoring which is done for thyroid nodule uh, not that it'll tell you whether the nodule is malignant or benign because that's not something which you know we are into the idea is to give you the thyroid score and remember thyroid score is a well validated score in which you can you will suggest it that whether you need to do an fnse or not so the first step of towards thyroid score is to see the composition of the thyroid nodule and you can see here uh, that we have been successfully be able to develop uh, as a tool so uh, you know if you just put upload the photograph of a thyroid nodule it will be able to tell you uh, the composition of the thyroid nodule right so i'll show you an example of that right so this is a photo we are uploading Right. Okay. So those not well versed with a thyroid nodule. This is what you see. This is a thyroid nodule here. Now this is a solid nodule, right? Uh, I, you know, deliberately selected this nodule because a lot of people who are not trained in uh, uh, radiology or endocrinology or thyroid surgery probably will see that probably looks like a cystic nodule, but it's not actually. It's actually a solid nodule. Uh, and again, our AI model successfully uh, categorizes this as a solid nodule right you can see in a few minutes it will generate the report yeah so it says it's most likely a solid nodule and not only that it will give you the confidence of it has in its own results and what we are able to find is that whenever it has confidence more than 52 percent it is generally right so we are able to find a cutoff also and in this case again we agree to this so it validates this model so this is a simple computer vision model uh, we are made for composition of the thyroid nodule but we are working to the other step and within a month or so uh, we will be success hopefully successfully developing a model where just by putting this photo you will have the thyroid score in front of you and using this thyroid score then you can 
uh, you know, ju judge how to work up this patient further. Okay, so this is another develop, and this is something which uh, we developed recently, uh, which uh, will really dazzle, which is really useful. Uh, may not be very useful for surgeons, but for physicians, this is something which is going to be very useful. You know, a lot of times patients send us their blood reports, and uh, you know they send it as a forward, as a WhatsApp. You know, your relatives will send you reports. So, uh, and you know, uh, we know with this, a uh, lot of labs, you know, Thyrocan and all that, they do. Uh, a big plethora of reports, right? Now, you don't need to, you know, all the points which are there in the reports, they're not relevant to your practice or relevant to you. You just require a particular set of data. For example, you know, let's say I look at a patient's uh, set of reports. I'm looking at the patient's metabolic profile. I'm looking at the fasting sugar. I'm looking at the post-meal sugar. I'm looking at the HbA1c, triglycerides, and so on. So, uh, what we did is we developed an uh, application where you upload the uh, PDF of the patient's report, right? So, this is a PDF of the patient report. You can see the PDF here. Right, so uh, upload the PDF, you enter the patient's uh, name, let's say a trial patient, right? So what it does is it extracts all the relevant rep, uh, values which are there in the report, right? So if you see in a second, this is what it will do. So you see it's running over here. Uh, it's a little slow right now because remember, this is just a test product, right? So here, so what this did is that it extracted the important value. So I required a fasting blood sugar. So it extracted that value, creatinine, HbA1c. Uh, there's other report was triglyc uh, was uh, TSH, which was not there, LDL triglycerides and so on, right? So it, it derived all the relevant reports which I, I required for me. And then you can save this as a, a Excel file or a CSV file, right? So it takes a few seconds and then saves this as a CSV file. Let me just forward this, yeah. So it saved this as a, uh, the patient's name was trial and then you save this as a CSV file where, yeah, you can see. So it, it extracted all the relevant values and uh, saved it as a Excel or a CSV file. Right, which you can see there, right? And you, if, I just want to show you how accurate it is. So this is the patient's original report. You can see the triglyceride was 90, the LDL was 78, you know, fasting, HPNC, so on. And you can see it has been successfully able to uh, extract the relevant information, right? So that's the idea. Uh, there was no, uh, you know, SGPT report. So it did not show that it said zero and TSH was not there. So, it, so you can customize this, you know, uh, let's say you are a hepatologist or you are a hepatic surgeon and a transplant surgeon and you require, you know, let's say the SGPT of the patient, the PTIR of the patient, and you can then customize this to get all the relevant data that you want. Finally, uh, this is another tool which I'm very proud of. In fact, you know, I've been uh, sleeping, uh, you know, ha having sleepless night trying to develop this as a tool. We are trying to develop the biggest uh, resource available for endocrinology uh, on this planet. I'm sure, you know, this is going to be once if it's, we are almost there. Once this is done, this will be the best uh, resource for endocrinology uh, where you ask any questions in the field of endocrinology and it will give you the answer. So this is the uh, endo AI uh, tool. For example, let's, you know, we have already uploaded a lot of data here. Uh, and, you know, uh, let's say what is, we asked what is the definition of an atypical pituitary tumor, right? So here it gives you the answer. Atypical pituitary tumor is this, 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 the KI index uh, and so on and so forth, right? Again, uh, you can ask another question. What are the treatment options for atypical pituitary tumor? And uh, here it will give you the options, right? So treatment options are gamma knife, focal radiation, uh, surgery, so on and so forth, right? So the point I'm trying to say is that we are trying to develop this uh, uh, based on a large language model, LLM. Uh, in fact, done right, this will, again, you know, I hope will replace something like an up-to-date where you can get the precise answer, exactly the precise answer uh, uh, for the question you're asking. Uh, instead of going through a lot of literature and a lot of text, you will get the uh, answer which you are looking for. Right, so this is the endo AI tool now, and we are making this as a uh, sort of correlation to this is the PubMed bot, where uh, this is still under development. Right, so you you know uh, open PubMed, copy the URL link of any uh, PubMed uh, abstract that you want, and what this will do is it will give you the summary of the of the uh, abstract. Okay, so again, this is still under you can as you can see this is still as a Python script rather than uh, uh, the uh, you know GUI product. So here you do this, right? So you we had this uh, article on pempidoic acid, and yeah. So what it did, it extracted the data on this, right? So it told you, you know, the strengths and weakness of the study, the relevant uh, uh, topics on the study. So you know, pempidoic acid is a statin alternative. Uh, you know, this is associated with low risk of cardiovascular disease. The strengths of the study, it has a large sample size, and so on. So within seconds, it will give you all the relevant information on your. Uh, you know, on, on the uh, topic, uh, on the abstract, which you want to read. So you don't need to go through the entire article, entire abstract, it'll, it'll just give you the relevant details. And then you can then use it, uh, a, let's say you're trying to make a presentation. So you take all this, copy all this, put it in your PPT, and here have the extracted summary, uh, strengths of the study, weakness of the study, and so on. 
right so within a second in fact you're making this as a uh, twitter bot so you you know uh, on twitter if you uh, put the uh, abstract it will give you all these things uh, as a twitter thread uh, within seconds right so that is what we are trying to develop and this is almost again we are almost there uh, you know i don't know if there's a commercial value to this but this is something you know uh, if a uh, lot if you know if you're someone who uh, has to present a lot uh, in conferences and so on this is something which will help you immensely so the idea is uh, we want to work together i you know uh, it's very important to collaborate so in this field it's you know uh, there, there are no lone wolves we are all uh, you know uh, part of a pack uh, we all need to work together and i think the best example is so you know again we need to learn this from the technology field where there is this concept of open source so if you see open source and if you see nowadays you know even if you take chat gpt it's an it's a good example of a well developed open source environment so what basically they do is that there are collaboration between different specialists working towards a common goal uh, and everything is locally funded there's no requirement for external funding and uh, you know uh, so we can develop this as an open source project for example you know we already run this you take insulin for example and insulin was invented by betting and best then uh, somebody from denmark saw that this is very interesting so they took that developed it further and it became the known orders company somebody from the us took it and became ally lily so, so the idea is that uh, in in our field also we had examples of open sourcing uh, now in the world of technology and healthcare we really need to develop open source applications where you know i develop something and then you you with your skills are able to develop this further that's the idea so how we can work together well we are trying to develop a consultancy to incorporate ai into your research and practice so if you are a if you are a doctor with a particular set of requirements for ai uh, we can see if we can work together that's the idea you can probably collaborate so this is my email address i'll put my email address over here it's dr om lakhani at the rest malai at the rate malai is healthtech.com so uh, you can shoot me an email uh, if you are if you have any ideas about how you can incorporate ai in your practice you can shoot an email we can have a zoom meeting and perhaps you know work towards a a, a good solid goal which you can do right uh, you can of course you know if you are running a research uh, uh, system or if you are if you are part of an academic institution if you are a professor uh, you are giving you know thesis topics to your students or if you are also doing a lot of research you can uh, use ai in your research it's very important useful because you know uh, these are your likelihood of getting publications in big journals is is big if you are using uh, this uh, in in you know using ai or machine learning in your practice right so there are some for example you know in my field you know these are some examples which you can do as research you can develop a computer vision tool to detect diabetic foot ulcers uh, you know you know continuous glucose monitoring right so you can use better analytic tools for cgm you can use machine learning tools for predicting insulin doses uh, machine learning tools so these are all doable in fact some of them we are already doing right so uh, these are some ideas uh, for potential research so if you are somebody who is interested in any of these uh, areas and or in your own practice trying to incorporate ai Uh, for prediction for detection for computer vision and on so on you will be able to do it and we're also trying to develop a training module a training set for uh, doctors to use ai themselves do it yourself a diy sort of model so we are coming soon with this uh, in the near future again let me show you so this what i showed you in the uh, earlier part was our own work but i'll also try to show you some of the other useful tools uh, available from elsewhere Uh, so for example you know uh, chat gpt itself is very very powerful uh, in fact here i'm going to show you an example where you can use chat gpt to make your own website you do you know uh, if you are somebody who doesn't know how to code it's fine you don't need to learn learn to how to code in fact you can use make an html website of your own within second so this is you know let's say uh, this is what i did today morning within few minutes right so let's say i want to make a website so i'll say write me an html code html is a code for a, a you know web page so i want the title to be this the subtitle as uh, this and the address and the appointment and all that right so you tell this to chat gpt so here you can see how beautiful it is writing the code right so it's writing the entire code for the uh, website within seconds right this is magical in fact i'll show you this is a working code i i in fact you know don't need to make any edits or changes to that so we to you take that as a code step 2 we copy this code and you can put it in a text uh, file or or you know and save it as a html right so you copy everything we copied all this code here and we saved this as a file right as a web website example uh, file and then you can see the website is ready within seconds right in fact you can go to chat gpt and start and here see you can see the website right so this is it made this in seconds right within seconds it made this not only this what it did was it it itself you know detected 
said that you know probably you need to have a google link also so gave a google link and uh, you know made a button where you can click and get an appointment online right so this this kind of thing so uh, uh, beautiful it is right so you can in fact use chat gpt to write code uh, even if you're not an expert in code right so this is something which is which is quite remarkable right so chat gpt itself is very useful and another tool which i found very interesting uh, it's something you know why this because it is very something to what we are developing like the endo ai app this is called glass ai uh, uh, again give let me give you a word of warning our tool is better okay this is uh, this is not as good this is you know probably if we refine our tool our tool will be better than this uh, in due course but here this is something you know if you just what it does is glass ai this is available you can check it out uh, so glass ai uh, you give a, a prompt where you give the patient's clinical condition and then it will give you a plan of action it will generate a plan of action for your patient for example let's say we typed uh, give me a treatment plan for a newly diagnosed patient with diabetes mellitus having HPA1C of 7.3%, LDL of 150, blood pressure of 142 by 92. Uh, and you do that and you can see here it's developing the treatment plan, generating clinical plan and here, right? So it says 45 year old male patient, newly diagnosed diabetes, listen, these are the uh, things you need to do. Uh, fasting blood sugar, lipid panel, uh, renal function test, ECG, urine analysis, uh, lifestyle modification, oral hyperglycemication, insulin, which I don't agree, 7.3 HPNC will not, not need insulin, uh, blood pressure medication, statin therapy. It says that statin is indicated. So the idea is uh, trying to tell you that you can actually develop a treatment plan. Try this with something in your own field. Uh, this is not our product, so, uh, you know, uh, I don't come back to me saying that it probably works or does not work but the thing is it's called glass ai it's already available uh, like i said what we are developing is something uh, for endocrinology probably be more accurate than glass ai uh, and you know uh, here it made a mistake uh, that mistake will not be there in our system right so that's the idea okay so you can try this out and then some other ai tools i'll show you this is called predibot predibot is this is the name predibot uh, it's a, a machine learning tool so you can in fact if even if you don't know coding uh, you can just upload your Excel file and it can develop a machine learning model within seconds. It says minutes. In fact, it does it in seconds, right? So you can develop a, uh, uh, you know, a machine learning tool uh, within seconds without uh, knowing how to code. And this is something which is, I know not many people know about this. This is called Lookup. Lookup is a very useful tool. If you're doing research, then you upload your Excel file and then you can generate all the lot of data. You know, you can generate ROC curve and you can generate the, uh, you know, sensitivity, specificity. Uh, so we did this for one of our own uh, abstracts. You know, we in fact, we did this for, uh, I told you about our, uh, you know, uh, computer vision model for thyroid nodule. We use this and it's very useful. And, uh, you know, within uh, minutes, we had all the data analysis uh, for our paper. So you don't need to hire a biostat or a statistician to do all this. You can do this yourself using Lookup, right? And this is called GPT for Sheets. So if you're using Google Sheets, you can use chat GPT right in the Google Sheets. This is GPT for Sheets. And again, you can, you know, extract relevant data, uh, do the analysis and so on and so forth. Again, very useful uh, for a tool for uh, doctors who are especially into research. So the take home message from the second section is that uh, we are doing some small little work in the field of AI to improve the quality of care. You too can do it. And if you are interested in doing this, uh, please send me an email and we can consider collaboration. And finally, remember this from HG Wells, adapt or perish now as ever is nature's inexorable imperative, right? So you need to adapt or you will perhaps perish and this is something we all need to understand and we all need to imbibe in our own lives so this is uh, how to get in connect uh, how to connect with me uh, there are two places where you can really connect one is by email uh, this is the email address here and you can uh, follow me on twitter uh, whatever i do whatever i develop whatever uh, is there is there on twitter so you can uh, you know check it out and uh, you know any new developments on what of lot of these fields which i showed you uh, would be uh, available for you on twitter so thank you for a patient listening and thank you, Dr. Garo, for this. And we can take some questions and uh, your suggestions, your ideas uh, forward.